Of all the tricks ever attempted in the 12 different seasons of Battle at the Barracks, there are 43 tricks that have a 100% success rate, making them the easiest tricks among the ever-growing list of 300 plus unique maneuvers. As usual, some filtering is necessary before we explore the list of the easiest tricks. First of all, Mike Vallely, notorious for breaking the rules in Battle at the Barracks, is solely responsible for contributing more than 30% of the tricks that have a squeaky clean 100% success rate. Since these tricks are technically violations of the rules, we're going to politely set them aside and let them think that they actually matter while we focus on tricks that adhere to the rules. This leaves us with 30 tricks in total that have a perfect record in their time throughout Battle at the Barracks. But the easiest tricks don't have to be pigeonholed into only ones with 100% success, right? If you're able to land something at least 9 times out of 10, it's safe to say that a trick with a 90% or better consistency is easy. Conveniently, there's 10 tricks that are at least 90% successful but below 100% perfect. Coming in at number 10 with a consistency rate of 90.12% is the Nolly Heel Flip, with 456 makes out of 506 total attempts. A little over 73% of the 154 skaters who've attempted Nolly Heels are 100% successful, led in overall volume by Mike Moe, who's landed f 29. No one's missed more than two Nolly heel flips ever, with Eric Costin, Felipe Gustavo, Heath Kirchart, Johnny Layton, and Alex Midler being equally responsible for dropping the collective success rate. Number 9 at 90.59% is the frontside shove it, with 154 successful attempts out of 170. 83% of the 89 skaters to ever go for a front shove are 100% consistent while the 15 unlucky individuals who've missed the trick are all tied for only missing one. Seva Krutkov is the frontside shove workhorse, landing 12, but missing one. Number 8 at 91.25% is the switch pop shove it, with 73 makes out of 80 total attempts. 90% of the 53 skaters who've tried to land a switch shove have a perfect record with the trick and the remaining seven who've missed the trick have only missed once. Luan Oliveira leads the pack in switch pop shove it productivity, landing eight and boasting a perfect record. Number seven at 91.89% is the switch frontside shove it, with 136 good attempts out of 148. 90.8% of the 87 switch front shove pursuers landed the trick every time. And what's starting to look like a pattern here is that the 11 skaters who missed the trick all tied at one failed attempt. Eric Costin is the switch frontside shove champ with a perfect record among the nine total he's landed. Number six with a 92.66% success rate is the fakie kickflip, comprised of 429 out of 463 total attempts. 90.6% of the 170 fakie flip attempters never missed, and among the 27 who've missed at least once, Felipe Gustavo and Benny Fairfax are the only two who've missed two separate fakie flips in a battle at the barracks match. PJ Ladd not only has a perfect record with fakey kickflips, but also landed the most of anybody with 26 total. Number 5, actually tied with the aforementioned fakey flip at 92.66%, is the tray flip, with 619 makes out of 668. 92.5% of tray flip wishfuls are 100% successful, and only 3 skaters of the 41 who've missed at least once were unlucky enough to miss two separate trays. Kenny Anderson, 2012 Sodi David Gonzalez, and Walker Ryan. Interestingly enough, there's a four-way tie for the most tray flips ever landed at 25 total, shared by Seva, P-Rod, Mike Moe, and PJ. Seva and P-Rod have each missed one tray flip, but Mike Moe and PJ are 25 for 25 each. Number 4, at 94.12% is the Ollie North, aka Ollie One Foot, with 16 lands out of 17 attempts. Johnny Layton is the only skater out of his 14 peers who've missed an Ollie North, which almost prematurely ended his third season round 2 loss to Chris Cole. Speaking of Mr. Cole, he leads the Ollie North rankings with 3 out of 3 perfect attempts. Number 3, at 95.24% is the Nolly Backside Big Spin, with 40 makes out of 42 attempts. 
The Nolly Big Spin seems to have a particular disdain for Brazilians named Felipe, with Felipe Gustavo and Felipe Mota being the only two to ever miss the trick out of the 26 skaters who've attempted it. Will Fayok is the top dog of Nolly Backside Big Spins, landing 7 out of 7. Number 2, with a consistency of 95.35% is the Pop Shove It, comprised of 41 makes out of a surprisingly overall low 43 attempts. The only two mo professional skateboarders to miss a f Pop Shove It on flat ground out of the 36 competitors are Seva Krutkov and Chris Roberts. The most prevalent Pop Shover in Battle at the Barracks is Mike Moe, with 3 out of 3 successfully landed. The most consistent trick that is above 90% but below 100%, with a consistency rate of 95.63%, is the f kickflip, with 547 makes out of 572 attempts. 22. Skaters have missed a kickflip among the 182 who've made an attempt at the trick, and only two skaters have missed a kickflip more than once with Chris Chan and Cyril Palmer each missing two in their same respective battles. You probably won't be surprised that the kickflip commander of Battle at the Barracks is PJ Ladd, with no less than 31 kickflips out of 31 attempted. Those tricks are cool, but what about the ones that have no record of being missed? Since roughly half of this list includes a trick that's only been landed twice out of the two total attempts, we'll start backwards in alphabetical order and work our way to the top, where volume will be the deciding ease level factor. It's also worth noting that even though this trick has a 100% success rate, it is by no means an easy trick. For example, working our way up the list, the 30th easiest trick with 2 out of 2 successful attempts is the Switch Kickflip Body Varial aka Switch Disco Flip, which Ronnie Krager inappropriately exposed us to in his Season 4 Round 2 victory over Corey Kennedy. Next up is the highly unique One Foot Nolly 360 Shove It. Introduced by Donovan Strain in his fight to make the Season 10 roster against Malto, who benefited from a lenient current capels on ref duty and would ultimately win the battle. Chris Cole's amazingly well done Ollie South was pitifully replicated on defense by Joey Brzezinski back in Season 3, which was the only time that trick saw the light of day in Battle at the Barracks. Feeling mischievous, Corey Kennedy opened up his battle and eventual narrow win over Jimmy Tsao with a Nolly frontside 180 one foot. The backside version of that trick was forgivingly approved on defense by ref Brandon Beeble in the same battle, with Jimmy's attempt just barely passing the sniff test. Back in Season 2, Peter Ramondetta was slated to play Mark Applebutter in the second round, but Appleyard couldn't attend for whatever reason, so Krob's Legion of Doom stepped in. Legion of Doom. <laughs> this battle, which predictably ended in Ramondetta's favor, surprisingly features the only instance of a Nolly Backside 360 shove it, set on offense by an unknown Legion member, and Peter pulls it off on defense. Thanks to the kookery arising from Season 12's influencer section, a nolly and a fakie ollie are two tricks that have never been missed, but have only happened once, which was during the round one battle between Tony Mangucci and Spencer Barton. My recommendation for an amendment to the Battle at the Barracks rules is that any trick attempt, at a minimum, requires at least one flip, or one spin, or one body rotation, or come on, at least make things interesting with a one-footer. Straight ollies in different stances aren't funny, and they're certainly not entertaining, nor are they competitive. You can count on Costin to commemorate the classics of yesteryear, like he did in the Season 11 Round 1 loss to Sean Malto, which was the only time a no-pop frontside shove appeared in a battle. And since both skaters landed it, it's got a 100% success rate. The first of a couple of fakie tricks is the fakie ollie backside body varial, taking place only one time in the ninth season's third place battle between almost rider Yunus Amrani and Norwegian Michael Sommer. On an unrelated note, this battle features the only time a hard flip cross foot was landed, or even attempted, but it took two tries for the eventual winner Yunus Amrani to land it and gave Michael letter T. Speaking of the fakie Ali backside body varial, Albert Nyberg gave PJ letter K with the frontside version of that trick back in the first round of Season 4, and put up a good fight with a half-cab Casper flip and half-cab double kick flip, but come on, this is PJ Ladd. 
The other fakey trick that's only been done twice, but has a perfect 2 for 2 consistency, is the fakey big double flip from Season 8's intense third round battle between Luan Oliveira and Cody Cepeda. Cody made a miraculous comeback in this matchup, and it was after him landing the fakie big spin double kick flip that Luan missed the fakie varial heel flip, gifting Cody with the chance to whip out his massive arsenal of difficult flat ground tricks and take home the dub. While editing, it's come to my attention that I neglected to include the front side 361 foot. Bragg's performance on defense was pathetic so there's not much to see here. The last perfectly consistent trick that's only been landed twice takes us back to the first round of Season 3, where Mark Johnson did a blunt slide on flat ground before Rick Howard achieved the same on defense. Definitely a violation of the rules, but Legends MJ and Rick Howard don't give a flying f what anyone says about that. The remaining 16 tricks are 100% consistent, and have been landed at least 4 times, and the first one is the Switch Ollie. All 4 Switch Ollies took place in Season 12, thanks to Tony Manguchi and Mike Moe, the latter of whom clearly was gearing up for a Switch Big Flip as proven in the succeeding turns. Number 15 is another violation since it's a slide, but Chris Roberts thinks he's above the rules, so his one foot power slide frontside 180 has been landed four times out of four, twice in season 11 and twice in season 12. Number 14 is the Ollie, which first appeared as a trick in Battle at the Barracks when PJ Ladd opened with one against Chris Cole in his third round season 4 win. Perhaps Tony Mangucci was inspired from that battle, and paid his respects by also opening his Season 12 match with an Ollie. Unfortunately, the strategy didn't work out as well for Tony as it did for PJ. Number 13, with 4 makes out of 4 attempts, is the Nolly Frontside Pop Shove It, first taking place in Season 6's third round battle between Moose and PJ, and again in Season 8 when Mike Peewawar performed one on offense against Cody Cepeda. That battle would also feature the 12th easiest trick, the fakie ollie one foot, but after reviewing the other battle where this trick took place, Albert Nyberg uses his popping foot as opposed to Mike's sliding foot. Technically Mike and Albert are both doing some type of fakie ollie one foot, but they're not the same, so we'll disregard this and move on to number 11, where the threshold climbs to 6 makes out of 6 attempts. First up among the 6 for 6 tricks is the Nolly backside 180. First appearing in Season 4's opening round battle between Willow Vildgruva and Chris Cole. Season 6's round 1 match between Bastian Salabanzi and Moose, then once more in Season 12 between Chris Joslin and Leandre Sanders. This trick's second cousin twice removed, the Half Cab, shares the same 6 for 6 consistency rate, which took place in a couple previously highlighted matches, including the Bastion v Moose battle and Legion v Peter battle while also showing up in the third round battle between Cody Cepeda and Tom Asta. The ninth easiest trick at Battle at the Barracks is another 6 for 6 -er, a fakey pop shove it. First appearing in Season 2, Corey Duffel mixed things up in his eventual loss to Rick Howard by throwing in a little fakey shove. And we've yet to see the Duff man appear in Battle at the Barracks since. The next time a fakey shove showed up was in Season 10's first round battle between Chris Colburn and P-Rod. Then again two seasons later in the Krob v Kelly heart battle, where the trick really aired heavily on the shove side and less on the pop. Moving on up to the 8 out of 8 makes consistency tier, we're looking at the switch frontside 180, which has only been landed more than once by Chris Cole, and hasn't made an appearance since the first round season 7 battle between Shane O'Neill and Christian Vanella. The second of the three 8 for 8 tricks is the Nolly Frontside 180, first appearing in the inaugural championship match between Benny Fairfax and Mike Moe, and with every individual doing it only once throughout their respective Battle at the Barracks careers. The last time we saw a Nolly Frontside 180 was in the Season 10 Round 2 battle between Mon Salto and Cookie Dough. The third and final 8 for 8 trick is the Fakie Frontside Shove. Popping up for the first time in this breakdown's heavily covered Nyberg vs PJ battle. The only skater to do this trick twice is Chris Cookie Dough Colburn, with everyone else doing a fakey front shove only once. The remaining 5 tricks on this list are each officially easier than one another based on volume. 
So starting off as the fifth easiest trick in Battle at the Barracks, the backside 180 has been attempted 10 times and landed 10 times. First appearing in the Season 3 Round 2 battle between Heath Kirchhart and David Gonzalez, the only skater to do a back one more than once would be none other than Sean Mal <gasps> Malto, who did the trick back in Season 8, but both were not by his choosing. Sorry, I missed Matt Berger and Chaz Ortiz's backside 180s. Matt's tied with Sean Malto for most backside 180s. The fourth easiest trick, with 12 successful attempts out of 12, is the fakey frontside 180, aka frontside half cab to piss off you purists. Chris Cole gave this trick life for the first time in Season 2 in his matchup with Mike Vallely. The fakey front 1 only appeared 4 times since, but then made a massive resurgence in Season 12, with half of the total 12 consolidated there. While no one's done this trick more than once, three different blokes by the name of Chris landed a fakey frontside 180 ollie. The third easiest trick at Battle at the Barracks with 14 makes out of 14 attempts is the switch backside 180. The switch backside 180 lay dormant from appearing in a Battle at the Barracks match until the third season when David Gonzalez set the trick on offense. Among the 13 different skaters who've landed a switch back one, Moose is the only individual to do the trick twice. The last time this trick took place was in the 12th season's first round battle between Kelvin Hoffler and Alex Midler. The second easiest trick in Battle at the Barracks was both landed and attempted 20 times, and it goes by the formal name Frontside 180 Degree Ollie, aka Frontside 180, aka Front 1, aka F The Frontside 180 was first executed by Billy Marks in the first season's third place battle between him and PJ Ladd, and was met with sarcastic enthusiasm. 18 different skaters have done a frontside 180 in a battle at the barracks match, and the only two individuals who've landed the trick twice are Matt Berger and Kelly Hart. Kelly's battle with Chris Roberts was the frontside 180's most recent appearance. The easiest trick at battle at the barracks, with a whopping perfect 30 makes out of 30 attempts, is the fakie backside 360 aka Caballerial. The first cab in an official battle at the barracks match came from Chris Cole in his already mentioned battle with Mike V. 28 different skaters landed a cab one time, and the only two who've landed the trick twice are Chris Cole and Shane O'Neill. The last caballerial sighting was during the Spencer Barton Tony Mangucci battle. What does all of this mean? Two immediate findings stick out to me. Apart from the fakie big double flip and switch kickflip body varial arguably being two outliers among the sample, there's not a single flip trick that's been done with 100% accuracy in Battle at the Barracks. This isn't too surprising though, considering the relatively higher difficulty required to flip a board with your non-popping foot than spinning the board with the foot you use to pop a trick. Another problem is sample size. The Caballerial's 30 for 30 makes is probably the only trick among the list that slightly caught my attention. Considering the requirement of doing a full 360 rotation leaves a decent amount of room for error in relation to a 180. Sure, doing a cab is considered a beginner level trick, or at best an entry level intermediate trick, but to see it outweigh the 180s by such a large margin was interesting. All of the other 100% consistent <laughs> All of the other 100% consistent tricks have been done only 20 times or less. And if you compare that to the overall average attempt count of nearly 69, the numbers might say that if you inflate the attempt count for those quote unquote easy tricks to match the overall average, it's possible that the perfect streak will end at some point. So if sample size is a concern, what if we require that the difficulty of tricks are only measured if the total attempt count is at least as high as the overall average across all 300 plus tricks? Hi, a few of the tricks are missing from my narration. No worries, because the correct list will ultimately still be displayed in this breakdown. After requiring 69 attempts or more, the 10th easiest trick, with a consistency rate of 88.31%, is the Nolly Kickflip, accounting for 491 successful attempts out of 556. 90.6% of the 170 skaters to attempt a Nolly Kickflip are 100% consistent, and if only PJ hadn't tragically missed that Nolly kickflip in season 10, he'd be the overwhelming leader with 30 out of 30. But alas, a miss is a miss, controversially leaving Mike Moe as the master. 
with no misses out of the 27 attempts. But Mike Moe had to redo three nollie flips, one of them being on offense, meaning there's a stain on this statistic and would require us to crown P-Rod, whose untainted 23 for 23 perfect attempt record is the most impressive. Eric Costin stands out as someone who struggles with nollie kickflips, missing five throughout his battle at the barracks career. Number 9, clocking in at being 89.34% consistent is the backside big spin, and it's been landed 377 times out of 422 attempts. 90.1% of the 152 skaters who've attempted a big spin can claim a perfect record, and since Shane sadly missed one of his 27, the boss title goes to Mike Moe and his 19 for 19 consistency. Nothing egregious stands out amongst misses with four skaters sharing a couple failed attempts at a big spin. The remaining seven tricks we've already covered, which were the nolly heel flip, frontside shove it, switch pop shove it, switch frontside shove it, fakey kick flip, tray flip, and kick flip. This third list of easiest tricks comes across as more accurate than the previous two. Sample size is still a problem though, but in this case it's about the lack of different competitors. 213 different skaters have competed across the 12 seasons of Battle at the Barracks, equating to an average of just under 18 new names every season. If you exclude the comparatively massive Season 12 roster, that number doesn't even shrink much with the 177 unique skaters who participated in the 11 first seasons which is an average of 16 new faces each season. More participation from a bigger pool of skaters would make for an even more accurate depiction of what flat ground tricks are truly the hardest and easiest, instead of finding out Mike Moe, PJ Ladd, and P-Rod are on top of yet another list. This is where I tip my hat to Steve Barra, who's at least making an effort to grow the Battle at the Barracks competition with fresh blood, while at the same time keeping past legends involved. Turns out that Barra's Season 12 aspirations resulted in the mistake of recruiting relatively underwhelming influencers instead of highly skilled and competitive core skaters. The politics of skateboarding's cliqueishness, where there's only a limited amount of rippers who fuck with the barracks and vice versa, has a lot to do with why we only see the same names every year. But I'll stick with crunching the numbers for now and leave the rest of this touchy subject to the expertise of the comments section. Who can articulate the intricacies of these issues better than I could?